Anna's back to the stage for now to talk about Berber language. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so hello again, and as I promised you this morning, now I'm going to talk about specifically a Berber languages or language uh, it's a discussion actually, mm -hmm. and uh, how uh, it is working currently in Wikipedia, and also the different challenges and learnings that we have. And I'm very happy to be in this conference because it's about minority languages. And as you know, uh, minority languages share a lot of challenges, but at the same time, there might be specificities or uh, some challenges that might be happening more in one region than the other. So the idea that I have with this presentation is to share with you the current situation for the Berber Wikipedias and also see from you what are the different challenges that you are recognizing and maybe the new things that you, you are seeing here, or maybe some challenges that you never saw, and it's likely. Uh, but the important part is that we try to learn from each other and see the different uh, the, the challenges and discussions that we can get from, from this. So first of all, I'm going to present briefly the Berber languages and the situation, so it's going to be kind of linguistic uh, overview. Then I'm going to move on to the Wiki, Wikimedia projects in Berber languages, but mostly Wikipedia, which is the biggest project, and the incubator. Then I'm going to go uh, a bit into the challenges and learnings, mostly the social part and some political challenges also. And finally conclude and uh, maybe discuss if we have time. So uh, Berber languages. Berber languages or Temazigh are the indigenous languages of North Africa. So before that Islam came to North Africa, it was the Berber language that was spoken. So when Islam came, it came with the Arabic language. and. Uh, uh, currently, people uh, speak either Arabic or Berber as a native language in most of, of uh, North Africa. And when I say North Africa, I'm talking specifically about uh, Morocco, Mauritania, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt, and some parts of other countries like Mali or, uh, or Niger also. Uh, so it is an official language in Morocco since 2011. Uh, it shares the official status with uh, Arabic. And the 2011 is probably an important date for those who follow the news because it was uh, the so-called Arab Spring at that time. And uh, in Algeria, it's a national language since 2001, uh, which is uh, different from uh, official status. But it, it has some, uh, some, of, uh, some recognition and is uh, taught in schools. Uh, so Berber, as I said, it's difficult to identify if it's one language or many. But uh, let's say that it's a family of languages. And uh, they are spread all over uh, North Africa. Uh, so it's discussable if there are languages or dialects, but it's also a political discussion. It's not uh, a linguistical discussion. If, if we discuss in terms of linguistics, they all have uh, this uh, ISO code, and it means that they are all theoretically languages. Uh, so in Morocco, there are three big branches, which are Tarifit, Tamazight, and Tashilhit, but there are many, many others, but those are the biggest clusters. In Algeria, maybe you might recognize the Kabyle because they are very famous, especially in Europe uh, with their diaspora. There is also Shawiya and there is the Tuareg in the whole Sahara region. So these people from the desert with uh, their desert clothes are mostly Tuareg who speak also Berber, but it's a very different dialect. Uh, also, one important point is that these dialects are not all mutually intelligible with each other. So you might find someone from the north of Morocco who has no clue when someone Tuareg speaks. And in this case, they will probably use Arabic as, as lingua franca. Uh, it's not always the case. And this is also why a discussion is necessary here, because then we will enter in other consideration related with the, with the school and we teach them teaching the language. Because if you have a standard version of the language and that everyone learns, it might be possible to understand each other. But this is a really big discussion. Uh, so the total number of locutors is unknown uh, because uh, of uh, consideration from the states who do not have statistics based on which language you speak. But estimations would be that between 20 and 30 million people in North Africa speak Berber. And as I mentioned, it's not one language. It's different languages and dialects. So this is a map uh, that is from uh, Wikipedia about the different Berber varieties that exist and the, the environment where now they are natively spoken. Unfortunately, I just realized that for some reason the north of Algeria is not part of the map. I, I, I didn't do it intentionally, but, but, but the Kabyle uh, dialect, which is the purple one, is really big up also. Uh, north of Tunisia, there is no Berber, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is kind of 
estimated uh, areas with the, where the Berber is natively spoken. Most of these areas are either desert or mountains. And this has historical backgrounds because, as I said, uh, when the Arabs came and the Islam came, there were a lot of wars. And usually people were going to the mountains to hide or to seek refuge. And this is the reason why the most places where Berber is preserved until today is mostly mountain areas. Uh, however, this map does not represent where Berber is spoken actually, because there are many people who are in big cities everywhere in the region and speak also Berber because of the dynamics of urbanization and the and related uh, matters. But this is mostly where the Berber was preserved as a native language, but uh, you can find Berber speakers all around North Africa. Uh, so uh, one specificity of the Berber language is exactly what Mark referred to earlier. There is no area where Berber, where Berber is the strongest language. Uh, so it's always in concurrence either with Arabic or with, with French. So if you are a Berber native speaker, you will go to school and you will learn either Arabic or French and you will learn also to read and write with one of them or with both, both languages. But you will never have Berber as your strongest writing language, let's say. So you will always have a concurrence with, with one of these two languages. Uh, another challenge that is uh, uh, shared by all the Berber speakers is the social status. So the language as, is associated to the mountain and to the countryside. So uh, mostly if, if you would speak this language in certain contexts, you would be seen kind of negatively because it does either mean that you don't speak Arabic or French, or it means that you just came from a region where Berber is spoken and it's related mostly to the, to the countryside, which is unfortunately not uh, positively seen uh, for, for various reasons. Uh, also, another uh, challenge is that it's not considered as an encyclopedic language because historically it has always been uh, oral language more than written language. And this is a thing that is shared in most of, of Africa in the indigenous languages. So uh, it's a different kind of culture where people tend more to uh, have oral traditions, for example, proverbs or, or poetries and things like that. The reason why it was not written, uh, there might be various reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, people who were studying and writing were doing so in Arabic. So if they would write, they would write in Arabic and they would consider that their language is used more, mostly for the daily life, but not for writing official documents. And this is, of course, I guess, a situation that you recognize for, for many minority languages where the status is discussed as not really encyclopedic status. And uh, there is always this hierarchy in languages and that not all languages would fulfill the same roles. Uh, I, I just give facts and I don't give any opinion, but uh, I'm just giving the situation that is currently uh, happening. It has a historical background. There is also a political situation, and this is also very common to all minority languages, because when a state is created, they want always to have nas national unity, and national unity is a lot about language. So usually uh, central states, especially those that are not very democratic, seek to unify people about one language uh, because for them this regional language is a source of problems, a source of separatism, uh, a source of conflict and it cannot never be a good thing for, for states. So you would probably not expect a lot of help from states when it comes to supporting regional languages because for them it's uh, more the majority language or the central language that should be uh, supported and given the idea about the state because language is a uh, a very big uh, uh, thing when it comes to identity and to national identity. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not specifically encouraged or supported, even though the situation is much better than before, uh, but it still uh, needs a lot of improvement when, I'm, when talking about Berber. But I'm sure that you recognize this in, in many other languages. Uh, so now talking about writing. As I mentioned before, Berber was mostly oral for several reasons uh, historically. Uh, but we are talking about Wikipedia. So in Wikipedia, encyclopedia implies writing. Um, this is also discussable, and I have the uh, presentation tomorrow about video content in Wikipedia. But uh, for the moment, Wikipedia, and since it was created, was about writing and about letters and about alphabet. So languages that are not written or that don't have many written sources face a lot of issues. 
the issues that we have in Berber is that first, uh, writing it is not standard. So uh, some people are writing Arabic letters. Why? Because it was the first letters that were used by, by the Berber speakers when the Arabic came and the, the Arabic culture came. People were adopting the Arabic letters in order to write Berber with it. And this is not also all, only in Berber, it's in many languages, like Persian was written, is still written in Arabic letters. The Urdu is written in Arabic letters. Uh, Turkish and Ottoman was, was written in Arabic letters before Atatürk changed to Latin. So it's, it's something that is not unusual. Then there is also the Latin letters. Uh, this came with the colonization. So when uh, France and uh, mostly France and Spain came to colonize our areas, uh, people were starting to learn Latin letters and some people were writing in uh, the, the language in the Latin alphabet for various reasons. Maybe the most uh, famous of them is that if you write your language in Latin alphabet, it would be learned uh, by more people and uh, more people will be uh, interested in, in, in learning this, this language. But it bears a negative connotation because uh, people would see it as if it comes from colonialism and also uh, that that Europeans seek to separate between the Arabic-speaking people and the Berber-speaking people. And finally, there is the Tifinagh alphabet. The Tifinagh alphabet is the original alphabet for the Berber language. It was uh, adopted since 3,000 years ago, but it was not uh, very uh, uh, broadly used. It was used only in the Sahara, and it was found in, in some rocks uh, there. So uh, it... Uh, it was a kind of ideological idea to adopt the Tifina alphabet in the start of the 2000s, because in Morocco, as I said, it was uh, uh, official language. So uh, one institute in Morocco that is the Royal uh, Academy for the Berber Language adopted this, this alphabet and called it for the neo Tifina, which is the alphabet that is official currently in Morocco. So if you go to Morocco, you'll find a lot of things uh, in this alphabet, which is the alphabet adopted by the state. So you might think, that if we use this script, uh, everything is solved in Morocco. But it, unfortunately, it's not the case for different reasons that we will go through. So, uh, before I uh, go to the challenges I talked about in relation with the uh, Tifina, I will go to Wikipedia in Berber. So Wikipedia in Berber, as I mentioned, there are a lot of dialects, a lot of languages. Uh, the most successful one of them is uh, Kabil. Kabil is uh, the version of uh, Berber that is spoken in the Kabila region in Algeria, I think by around 5 million people. Uh, and there are, uh, they have a huge diaspora also in France that are very active. Uh, so they have succeeded in having their own Wikipedia. So they're out of the incubator and they have their own Wikipedia because they have a community that works and that is quite active. Uh, other versions are still in the incubator. So most of the Berber from Morocco and the, the Tuareg, and the last one, which is very interesting, which is the Moroccan standard Tamazight. So I have talked about this Royal Academy in Morocco that was created in 2001 for Berber. So the role of this Royal Academy was to work on a Berber and the standard version, which they did amazingly uh, with the new uh, alphabet. But the problem is that the Moroccan standard Tamazight is not native language of anyone. So nobody wants to write in it because everyone likes their dialect. <laughs> So there is a standard version which is written with rules, with grammar, with everything, but it's only the scholars and people working at the academy and some very enthusiastic activists who write in it. But most of the other people prefer their dialects and still have conflicts related to how they write their dialect because they don't appreciate the Moroccan standard that was, the, that was not taken into consideration uh, their different dialects. And it was kind of uni unilateral choice when the choices were made in, in the academy. So this is an example of the uh, Berber Wikipedia in, uh, in Kabil. So uh, they have, I think, in Kabil around, I hope I'm not mistaken, but I think they have around 9,000 articles, but you might correct me, you can check it later. Uh, so Kabil, the most important is that there is nothing related to the state because they're from Algeria, and in Algeria they don't have any standard. So the Kabil people, and as I mentioned, they have a huge diaspora in France, chose to write in the Latin alphabet. So this is an example of it, and they have some kind of specific uh, letters, for example, this is uh, R and Sh and things like this. So, but, but mostly it's Latin alphabet and it's community based on their consensus, but uh, 
there might be some people who do not agree about it and life goes on as they say for them so they already chose this and they are already in wikipedia and they are pretty active uh, then if we go to the incubator so this page is uh, the Moroccan uh, page uh, or one of the Moroccan page and it's for, for one specific dialect. So what you will see in here is that we have different alphabets in one page. <laughs> so you have Tifina up, then suddenly in the middle between parentheses you have Arabic and then suddenly you go down, it's kind of English template and then some other stuff and then again something talking about Berber. And what, this, what does this mean? It means that the person who did this, or actually people who did this, do not agree with each other. So the first person just copied the template in English, and we can see the rest here. Then another person who is probably motivated by Tifinagh put some stuff in Tifinagh. And then some other person who is motivated by the uh, Arabic letters just added things in the Arabic letters. So, uh, so it's pretty interesting, but it's bad for us because it's very difficult to continue working in such an environment where there is no agreement and we cannot really advance and have a, a, common, uh, a common agreement and a common sense of how the, uh, the encyclopedia should be if we want to be an encyclopedia. Because here, all this is in the incubator, which is different from what I presented before. So this is proper Wikipedia. You can find it through Google if you just write Kabil Wikipedia. While, while here, this is inside the incubator, so most of people will not find it, and I'm happy they will not find it. We don't want to expose our problem uh, at this stage. Uh, then another example is this one. Uh, so this is from the Tarifit dialect, which is also from Morocco. So they have some menus in Arabic. It's not Arabic, it's Arabic letters, but it's Berber. Then they have the text in Latin, and there is the portal in Tifina. What does it mean? It means of course, this is community-based, so we don't want one person to write. But the problem is that when different people write, and everyone has its own ideology, it makes that uh, there, there, is, there is no consensus. And the, like the title is again in Tifina, if you see up, and then uh, Latin, and then... So it's good that many people participate, but if they don't agree, uh, it's, it's a bit uh, difficult. Uh, another part, another example of the same thing. So you can see there is a Tifinar and then a, a, a Latin. And finally, this is the page of the Royal Academy I talked about. So this page is very well done because it was done by the Academy themselves and it's uh, in the Tifinar alphabet. So this is the Moroccan standard, standard Temazir. But if someone uh, starts to read, uh, I'm, I'm not expecting you to read, but anyway, if, if someone starts to read, uh, everyone will complain because this is the standard version made by the state and it's not dialect for, of anyone so you might if you are from the south you might like the first sentence because it's close to the southern dialect but then if you read the second sentence it will be close to the northern dialect so you will always complain uh, and uh, it's it's a bit a pity because this is a very good page and it's very professional uh, for, for this dialect, or for this version, that is the standard Tamazir, it is what is taught in schools currently. And this is also another problem, because many people don't want their children to learn this version. And for them, it's more priority to learn their own dialect. But this is, again, a political discussion. I try always to avoid politics, but it follows me. <laughs> <laughs> so, the challenges that we have. The first one is writing, as I explained. So, the standard version, tried to tackle this problem and they have uh, created an alphabet for it but people don't like it because it's not a mother tongue so when people go to the encyclopedia they want to write in their mother tongue they don't know the letters because it was made official in 2011 so people who are born in the 70s or 80s don't know the letters and they're not interested in learning the letters they will say why would i learn some letters that only school children know and some crazy academicians. So they just write in the Latin or in the Arabic. And uh, if, if actually, uh, because there is one solution that says that if this uh, teaching continues, then this is only a generational problem. And maybe in 100 years, everybody will know Tifina because it's taught in school and this will be solved. But are, are we to wait for 50 years until all us die <laughs> and only people who know Tifina will write? This, this is the question. Uh, but but the, main, the main challenge is that there are a lot of alphabets and most of people are very free. There is kind of anarchy for the alphabets. So there is no rule, no structure. And 
on the same time we don't want to have too many rules because people will complain that it's not democratic but it's it's a problem that everyone can choose the alphabet they want because there is no harmonization when you go to the encyclopedia and we can never get uh, the articles to go out as a wikipedia if this is not solved uh, also another problem is that uh, the languages the berber languages as i showed in the map are cross country languages so they are not regional but they are cross country and this is very political because each state try to say that we own the berber language uh, for us and when they make the standards they are in competition with each other so morocco made the standards and we want to have it in uh, berber letters uh, but then algeria or some parts of algeria said okay we have also berber and we write it in latin so when you go to wikipedia you have this issue that maybe the dialects are close to each other but written in two different ways uh, you might say that this is not a big problem because if you go for example to serbian wikipedia you can read it in both you can read in cyrillic and in latin but for us it's more alphabets it's different countries so the communities do not really like each other the way that they, they don't want to find the consensus they just want to say that we are the one who are right and our country is the best etc uh, so another challenge is that there is a lack of official support uh, this one is i think difficult to tackle in this conference but it's good to mention it uh, there is another problem that is uh, probably weird for you uh, but it's very interesting uh, there is a lack of hardware so you remember these uh, let letters that I've been showing you? These ones? There is no keyboard in the world with these letters, a physical keyboard. There isn't. Uh, I went to the Berber Academy in 2016. I had a presentation. And I told them, where do you guys sell the keyboard? And they said, oh, this is a good idea. <laughs> but then, then nothing happened from there. <laughs> so, so there is no keyboard. If you want to write in, in Tifina, you have to use some kind of softwares. And what does it mean? This means that people are not really encouraged to write. And those who do, because there are people who do, are considered as hardcore activists because they will do everything to write in the alphabet. And this is not very helpful because I write in, in, in this alphabet, but I don't consider myself as a hardcore activist. I just want to write in my language. It's, I mean, I, I'm not extremist or I'm not looking for for any any issues i'm just looking for the proper tools to write in given alphabet this is also very difficult to tackle because who will produce keyboards if you will talk with the it companies they are not interested because it doesn't bring them benefit so it's it's a big big issue and this can be also probably relevant to many african languages that can have alphabet but they don't have keyboard so how do you expect people to write uh, finally, there is lack of sources. So there are almost no written sources in Berber for the reasons we said before. People were not writing. It's oral traditions. So if you write an article, uh, not only in Berber, but also about Berber, if I write something that my grandmother told me, uh, I will be asked for, for sources if I write in the English Wikipedia. And I don't have any source. The only source is my grandmother who got it from her grandmother, etc. Uh, and it's a huge problem, but I know that there is a discussion about uh, uh, the oral sourcing that we can take uh, later. And uh, also related to the sources is the media that I mentioned also when I talked about advocacy. So because this is very political and because the countries are talking a lot about this nation state and the central state, the media are also involved in that so the media don't talk that much about regional languages or or anything related to that so it's very difficult to find sources when it comes to these languages so conclusions uh, it is important to have wikipedia in berber and it is important to have it in all the languages because this is the idea with wikipedia to have wikipedias in languages because it's a mirror of the local culture but not only because of that but it's because as uh, mark mentioned there is the cultural context so there are things from the Berber cultural context that only Berber people can write about. And this is not only in Berber, this is everywhere. I mean, if you want to find information about Vietnam, it's people from Vietnam who will write the most accurate information because they are there and they know the culture. So there is a point in having Wikipedias in other language because they will be the, or they should be at least, the most accurate when it comes to the region or, or to the culture. Uh, moreover, if there is a Wikipedia, in the Berber, it will be boosting the, standardi the standardization of the language. Because yes, we have a lot of challenges, a lot of problems, 
But when more people come and fight with each other, it creates a discussion. The problem is that when there are two people uh, not listening to each other and just uh, writing each one in his di dialect or alphabet, then, then it's problematic. But I believe that when we have more people, the discussions comes more and the, the results are better. Uh, and finally, as I mentioned, there are many challenges faced by the Berber Wikipedia. Some of them are common to many languages and regions. Some of them are maybe new for you. But the idea is that I wanted to, to share this with you and see if you could recognize these issues, if you could help solving some of these issues, and if you maybe have already some ideas about how to tackle some. Uh, you can read more again about the, all the different uh, Wikipedias and also about how the standard Moroccan Berber was shaped. And you can, if you want to have fun, go to the incubator and look for the Berber incubator and many other African languages. They're really funny. Sometimes you find two letters and then something else and some video. And it's really fun in the incubator. So I encourage you to go inside. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Anas. Um, uh, we've got Jose next, if you could come up. And if there's somebody got, well, yeah. definitely I recognize the issues. Uh, we don't have, to, you kind of make me feel grateful. We don't have to do with <laughs> different alphabets and different nations. But, um, but yeah, I certainly, you know, in dealing with those, those differences, the standardization issues, yeah. it's certainly things that we can recognize. Um, if I can unplug you, does anybody have a question? How are you, are you? On a, oh, you're on the system already, aren't you? Yeah. Your presentation, yeah. So does anybody have a question? I have a question, but I just wanted to say you're not alone. Oh, <laughs> this is called Sakha language, just got a keyboard. Ah, and, okay. so, I mean, Maybe you can tell me how you got it. It's yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, techno in order in Promise. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Believe me, it's really recent, so. Mm. I certainly think that issue about uh, how, how do you help that moderation process is something where I think in the first conference where the Scottish were talking about that, that was something I could see that they they put a lot of thought into how to, yeah, uh, you know, calm those kind of conversations down. Which I think that that was something that I'm very interested in finding out other how other languages have have dealt with that. So, um, so maybe we could come back to that tomorrow or later today. Okay, thank you, Anas. <laughs>